Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Hitting. This is Matt Noakes, founder of Hitting Solutions for Serious Hitters. Now, the good pitching will always get out good hitting. But what great hitters know is that when you get your pitch, you never, ever miss your pitch. You don't, you're not happy about fouling a ball off, fouling a ball straight back and thinking, ooh, that was a good swing. Wasn't a good swing, you missed it. Great hitters hit their pitch. You take the, the, the best 15 games away from the top major league hitters, and what do you got? They don't got a very good season. That's why it's so important to hit the pitch that's in your zone. When you get a pitch to hit, your goal is to never miss that pitch. You know what the highest batting average is? You know what the count is? for the highest batting average, what hitting count is. When I ask people that, I try to, you know, kind of throw them off a little bit and I say, you know, what's the hitting count? Like, you know, 3-1, 2-0. What, what, do you, what do you think that the highest batting average is? And they kind of wander around. But actually, the answer is the first pitch. There's more hits every season in the big leagues on the first pitch than any other count. Now, if, if that's not a good pitch, then it's the second pitch. If that's not a good pitch, it's the third pitch. It's within the first three pitches, ultimately. The top batting average is the first pitch, and the most hits are within the first three pitches. Conversely, great pitchers get good hitters out within the first three pitches. Now, what happens is, is they pitch to contact and take the sting out of the hitter's bat, and they get hitters out that way. But that should not uh, that should not make you not want to hit that first pitch when it comes into your zone. The reason why hitters aren't very good at that is because they don't practice it. I was working with a young player who was in AAA, and one year, when I came into the organization, four years earlier, he was the the top prospect in the organization. He went from low A to high A to double A to AAA in all one year. Almost, he was knocking at the door in the big leagues, I mean, he was a, phenom- a, a phenomenal player, and everyone just loved him. He, they, they just thought he, he was just a can't-miss player in the big leagues. Well, three years later, he hadn't had a good season since. So he was in AAA, and in July, he was hitting about 185, and they sent him down to where I was so I could work with him. He was pissed off because he's down in high eight ball. So, and, and I understood, so I just... I just left him alone for about three days. But, of course, we worked. I'd do him soft toss and, you know, get, get him ready for games. But I was just observing him. I'm not going to give him any advice because he, he wasn't going to take any advice. So as I was working with him, after about three days, I was just watching him. I said, you know, I'm throwing him the ball underhand. I said, you know, what are you doing? You know, he's hitting ground ball, ground ball, pop up, ground ball, pop up, line drive, line drive, line drive. I go, why does it take you five swings to hit a line drive? He goes, what do you mean? I go, why does it take you five balls to hit a line drive? Why don't you smoke it on the first one? He goes, well, I'm just, I'm just getting warmed up. I go, you don't get it. You want to train. You want to rehearse to be great at the first pitch. The, the, the secret of being a great hitter is learning how to get ready. He's learning how to get ready for drills, learning how to get ready for soft toss, learning how to get ready for batting practice, learning how to get ready for the game, learning how to wait in line and get your mind, your body, and your emotions prepared so that that first swing that you hit, you hit it with so much directional force that it sounds different. The big league hitter hits the ball and it sounds different. Why? Because they put so much directional force into the ball takes 8,000 pounds per square inch to hit a ball 400 feet. Now, if you're over 175 pounds and you have players in high school between 170 and, and, and 210 pounds and, and maybe the heavier guys are hitting the ball you know, 360 and the lighter guys are hitting the ball 310. The fact is they have access, even the 170 pounder has access to probably... 10, 12,000 pounds per square inch. And the, you know, the heavier guy probably has more. But it's bing, bang, bang. All their energy is going all, uh, all different directions. And 
in the max energy in one direction that they could probably get into the ball is about 5,000 pounds per square inch. Okay. Because they don't know the secret of directional force. So the lesson today is about directing your energy and compressing the ball. Now, you hear a lot of, of talk about your, uh, your bat speed. Bat speed's great. It's good to have great bat speed, but your bat speed is your bat speed. If you think about increasing your bat speed, you're just going to get in trouble. A lot of times you end up quitting, which was you quit your, your weight shift and you just arm swing. If, if your only goal is to throw the barrel without a weight shift, then, then you're going to end up, you're going to end up quitting and you're not going to be hitting the ball with your weight. If you're swinging 90 miles an hour on a motor, think about this. If you're going 90 miles an hour in a motorcycle and you, and you run into a wall, it's a lot of force. But if you're going 90 miles an hour in a semi truck and hit a wall, it's a lot more force. So your weight shift into the ball matters. It matters. And if you're going to get directional force, you need to know how to direct your energy into the ball. And that has to do also, along with getting your weight into the ball, it's the angle of your bat, and but it's also the depth of the pitch, which, which has a lot to do with your timing. Wow, I'm in San Diego here, and it's always boring blue, you know, boring blue and 72, but here it is raining. Anyways, so I'm talking to this young man, and, and he's not hitting line drives on the first pitch. So I think he took it as a challenge. The next day he comes out, he's hitting line drives on the first pitch and soft toss. And I said, great, now go take that out into batting practice. So the first ball you hit, you smoke it because the whole point is so that you can be ready for any situation. You don't want to think of swings as, you know, you have 10 swings in batting practice. You don't have 10 swings. You have one swing and you can do the one swing 10 times. But you want to think of it as one swing. It's not like going to the batting cage and, and you're warming up eight times and you hit the last couple balls hard. You don't get that. That doesn't happen in the game. That's not how you become successful. You need to learn how to, how to prepare, how to get kinesthetically aware. So I want to talk about this in a little bit of detail. So follow me. Okay, so I tell this young man to get ready for batting practice in the batting cage. So I'm out there throwing a batting practice. First pitch, he's about 5'11", about 185 pounds. Smokes it right center. And he, he was smooth. He could blast it. He has about 440 feet, 450 feet. He blasts it. And I went, there you go. First pitch. You smoke it. Then he starts flaring balls all around the field. And I didn't think much of it because, hey, he had met the one goal I asked him to meet. In other words, getting ready for the first good pitch you see. So a couple days went by and the same kind of thing happened. I'm throwing him batting practice. Every time he launched the first pitch, hit it 450 feet. So I'm smiling every time. I'm like, okay, you got it. You got that. So that you have the confidence that you can get into a game and be able to hit the first pitch. Highest batting average, like I said, is the first pitch in a game. So I, I take notice that he's flaring the balls after that. And so... I stop batting practice and I go, what are you doing? I go, the first ball you smoke, you crush it. You, you know, you hit it 450 feet. He's, he was left-handed hitter. He's hitting the right center. And then now you're flaring balls all over the place. He goes, what are you doing? He goes, well, I hit my home run. Now I'm working on hitting the ball all over the place. I'm all, you don't get it. When you see a big leaguer take batting practice, they don't flare the ball all over the place. They repeat. They wash, rinse, repeat. They, if they hit the ball in one depth, I mean, why would you hit the ball if you have good timing? Timing is le letting the ball travel a certain distance. So it, it's, you hit the ball at a certain depth. If you hit the ball at that same depth, it should go to the same location. And if you are on the ball and in good position and that ball gets a little deeper in the game, it'll just go the other way. Because going the other way and pulling the ball have to do with hitting out front or hitting it deeper, your depth, not so much in and out. So I said, listen, your timing is good right now. You're hitting the ball at the same depth. You're going out, hitting the ball at the same depth and then flaring it to, to left field. Why would you hit the ball that, that you could hit 
a home run to right center, yet you're going out and in oversteering your arms and carving it to left field. I go, you just want to repeat, 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 repeat. And then you'll be in a good position. Now, in batting practice, here's a little secret. In batting practice and live batting practice on the field, we get a lot of information because we, we can see fly to ball. When you see fly to ball, you can see if it's hook and spin and whatever. It gives you more information than when you're hitting in the batting cage. And that little bit of, in, in, informa- that little bit of extra information g- gives you um, the ability to make adjustments with your mechanics here and there. But of course, you don't want to be changing your mechanics a lot. You want to you want to have a repeatable swing and then have all your attention focused out on the pitch timing and hitting it at the right depth. Okay, so if you smoke a ball, crush a ball 400 feet, you want to be rehearsing. When, when you recoil your bat or when, when you bring your bat back around, everybody's watching the ball and you're watching the ball. You should be out there rehearsing contact, that point of contact getting accustomed to the feel of where you hit that ball and be shifting your weight into into that place where you hit that ball and you know placing your bat right there again and then thinking in your mind shorter than the last swing this is something that i learned we're hey we're emotional if we hit a ball 450 feet and then we try to repeat we're going to get bigger and bigger 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 swing we're going to swing harder and harder more out of control so I always like to, each swing was shorter than the last time. So if I hit a ball 450 feet, if I want to hit it 450 feet again, I go and I think, of course, I rehearse immediately. While everyone's watching the ball, maybe I'm watching the ball. I'm also rehearsing contact. I'm not holding my bat back and not doing anything. I'm on to the next pitch. Even though I'm watching the ball, I'm preparing for the next pitch. And then I got, I, I got the bat out there, but I'm thinking I'm going to compress that sucker. I'm not going to try to get bat speed because your bat speed is whatever it is. You're going to swing out of your ass anyways. And so you want directional force. You want to compress that ball. You want to think shorter than the last time so that you can repeat and get that directional force again. Because if you just let it go and you just try to hit it harder and harder and harder, your swing is going to get longer and longer and longer. And by the time three or four swings later, you're, you're going to have a, you might have a loop in your bat if, if things go wrong. A professional hitter, that probably wouldn't happen to, to, to them. But as a young player, you got to start learning how to repeat. And young players don't repeat very often. Now, you often wonder why major leaguers, when you watch them take BP, they'll hit five or six home runs in the same spot. And you might wonder, well, why aren't they hitting the ball to right and to left and right and, you know, spraying the ball all over the place? Well, they may take the first round and pick a depth that's a little deeper and maybe go the opposite field, but they're going to repeat the opposite field. Bam, 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 go the other way. And then they'll, they'll pick a new depth. And they'll repeat, maybe it's up the middle and go bam, 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 bam. Because why would you want to hit the ball in the same depth in three different locations? That means you you can't repeat your swing. Remember, you want to have a repeatable swing. And inside of that, each swing, you want to be shorter than the last one because we're emotional. We tend to get bigger and bigger in our swings and longer in our swings and start to pull our head and get away from it. We want to be more compact. That's why. We want to compress the ball. Think about compressing the ball. Don't think about bat speed. If you think about the bat speed, number one, you're more apt to quit on the ball, which means you don't get your weight into the ball. If you think about compressing it, you are going to get your weight into the ball. And when you look at your swing after you just, you're thinking about taking an itty bitty swing and compressing it, a nice shorter swing than the last one. If you take a look at, if you had a film, of that swing, dust would be flying. You're going to be swinging out of your ass. You're going to be swinging as hard as you can. You're going to swing as hard as you can anyways. It's about controlling yourself, controlling your mind, your body, and your emotions. So remember, in batting practice, it's directional force. In drills, you want to be ready for the first ball in soft toss. And even in soft toss, for example, let's say the first ball you hit well is up the middle. Then repeat, because in soft toss, your timing is going to be so good. 
you don't want to be hitting the same depth in, in different locations. So if you hit a ball up the middle and you crush it, go bam, 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 right up the middle. Hit five or six balls right up the middle in the same spot. Because if you hit it at the same depth, they should go in the same spot. Then in the next round, if maybe you hit a little bit further out front and you pull each one, don't be scared of that. Just go, you know, wham, 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 and hit those, hit, hit five or six in a row, you know, to right center if you're a left-handed hitter or left center if you're a right-handed hitter. Who cares? If you're hitting it at that depth, that round, that's where it should go. Then in the next round, if it's a little deeper, I mean, you can do that on purpose and good hitters will do that on purpose. But if they do that on purpose, they're going to repeat, 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 repeat. So he learned a big lesson, this young player, and he ended up going from 185 because he had six weeks left in the season. He got player of the week twice. And he ended up becoming MVP. We won the championship series and he became MVP of the championship series. And he ended up with 18 home runs and a whole bunch of RBIs. Another player was Tyler Moore. And he was hitting 195 very close. And he was struggling. And finally I said, hey, what do you got to lose, kid? And Because he'd been burned. Just probably like some of you out there who've been overcoached. And you've watched way too many videos on YouTube and you're trying to take a a tip here and a tip there. And you're always looking for one more piece of information. Well, let me tell you that one more piece of information, if it's not exactly right within the context of what you're doing, it will cause information overload. But information overload doesn't exist when you're dealing with truth. That's why I came up with the 12 touchstone, 12 rules that are truths, the 12 truths that it's like this. For example, if you transfer your weight into the ball on time, the flow into the ball, if I said, hey, there's a truth that you you coordinate your stride and transfer and you shift into the ball, you get your weight into the ball and it's a smooth flow and, you know, that feels like it swings itself and you swing across your face. That's that's another thing. If you didn't hit the ball right, you wouldn't think those two things were wrong. You just let those thoughts settle down and you would know that that's just what your swing feels like. And you'd focus on other things that were more important, like your timing. Maybe your timing is off, but you're not going to all of a sudden think, well, I got to stop flowing into the ball. You're not going to start thinking because it's truth. When it's truth, it will layer together. So you got all these voices out there that that are going to be coming at you. So this lesson today is about directing your energy and you direct your energy by preparing yourself in line for your drills. So the first swing you can repeat in the first round, wherever that ball, that first ball goes, because you're going to crush that first ball, you're going to go bam, 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 hit the same ball in the same spot that whole round, because you're going to probably time the ball the same spot if it's soft toss, because it's easy to time the ball. All right. That will prepare you. Do the same type of thing to get ready to take batting practice so that you can get into BP. And if you time the ball to a certain spot and you crush that first pitch, which is your goal, you hit a home run, you hit a double, you hit a low line drive, fine. Repeat, repeat, repeat. If you hit a low line drive up the middle, repeat, 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 repeat. Because that will mean you're timing the ball to the same spot every time. Okay? If it, if it gets a little farther, it'll just go the other way. That's just how it works. If you're on the ball and in good position, and if you're thinking rehearse contact, because listen, when you stride, you're hitting the ball way out there. You got to rehearse. You got to know where those GPS coordinates are, where that ball is. And you got to kinesthetically feel what it's going to feel like to make contact out there. So directional force is an important concept. It's an important concept with anything that you do, any job that you do with utility, like you using a hammer and a nail. You've heard me use that example before. You're not even thinking about your mechanics or anything. You're just thinking about driving the nail straight into the wood. And you know that bending the nail's not right. You know, you know, that would be like bending the nail is kind of like the first thing that came to my mind, bending the nail. That's what would happen. If all of a sudden, instead of compressing the ball, instead of thinking short, instead of thinking repeat, instead of thinking, you know, I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, hit, hit the first pitch in the zone. 
if you thought I'm going to try to hit bat with bat speed instead of shortening each swing, if you try to hit with more bat speed, that's like bending the nail. You're going to probably bend the nail because if you quit, quitting means you stop your weight shift. Ultimately, that's an arm swing. But if your weight shift is is lighter or you don't shift enough into the ball, you're going to arm swing it. You're going to you're 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 going to post up your front leg and you're going to go into rotation too early. You're going to hook the ball, okay? Or you're going to hit the ball with nothing because you posted up too early. You've been there too long. And that springboard of the weight shift, that energy spike is on the way down. You don't have any energy. Now, this may be a little bit advanced for some of you listening. But listen to it again and 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 understand these principles about being short to the ball and repeating. If you take anything from this lesson... Repeat, repeat, repeat. Hit the ball at the same depth. The ball should go in the same location. That's what big leaguers do, and the ball sounds different. When you learn directional force, you will be a hitter that coaches and scouts and recruiters will say, boy, the ball sounds different off his bat. And that's what you want. You want to be the guy that the ball sounds different off your bat because then you're going to get noticed. Remember, the hitter's count with the highest batting average every year is the first pitch if not the first pitch if it's a ball then it's the second pitch if not the second it's the third most hits are, are within the first three pitches and and conversely like i said most pitchers get the hitters out within the first three pitch they pitch to contact and they take the sting out of the bat but still your goal is not to hit the nasty pitches that the pitchers throw because good pitching gets out good hitting and, and you got to tip your hat sometimes and good hitters know the secret that they don't miss their pitch. So imagine what your life would be like. If you could wake up and just understand that and go to the ballpark every day. And, and you just kind of felt the same. You knew what you were doing. And imagine what it would feel like if you got into the game and you get your pitch and you crush it. Because that's just what your swing feels like. You begin to start hitting with certainty. You, it begins with an in, in intentional training, becoming intentional about your hitting, understanding what you're doing, and practicing with intention. And ultimately, hitting becomes free and easy like soft toss. If any of this resonates with you, I've blocked out a limited number of time slots for strategy calls. We'll spend 45 minutes going over what's working and what's not. So if what I've been talking about resonates with you, and if you want to learn more about directional force, you want to learn about hitting that first pitch and being prepared and learning how to get ready for soft toss, learning how to get ready and wait in line so, so that you're ready to hit that first pitch even off a tee, learning how to get ready so that when you're waiting outside the batting cage, when you get that first pitch in BP, you smoke it so that you know how to get ready. Ultimately, it's about getting ready so that you know how to get ready for the game. You're standing in the on-deck circle. You know what to do to get ready because you've been doing it all day long. When you get that first pitch in the game, you smoke it with directional force. And it gets to that depth, you smoke it. You don't scatter that energy, you smoke it. So my team and I have blocked out a limited number of spaces in my, in my calendar for strategy calls. If you'd like to talk about this a little bit more, if you'd like to learn about what this is all about, because trust me, this is one of, this is one of the reasons why players end up playing in the big leagues because they have an epiphany about this subject. And maybe this was a little over your head. Well, whatever your biggest challenges are, we've seen it and we know how to overcome it. If you're not a serious hitter, though, this isn't for you. If you are a serious hitter, here's how I can help. If you're on the path to playing at a higher level and your dream is to play college ball and after that professional baseball, Hey, you like playing ball. You're committed. You're already committed. It's, it's, it's almost like you're a, a pro player anyways. If you're willing to do whatever it takes to reach your dreams, if that's you, then go to mattnokes.com slash apply. mattnokes.com slash apply and book a strategy session so we can talk. I love doing this. For someone who's a serious hitter and wants to learn, go to mattnokes.com slash apply and book a strategy session so we can chat.